like a lawn belt, a uh, big triangle, delta wing. This is a Cold War British bomber. I think the last time it saw any kind of service was in the, uh, Jamie tells me, in the Falkland Island conflict. That was one of the Falkland Islands. That, uh, yep. Tried to gain some sort of independence from Great Britain. And so uh, that's the last time. But what's really neat about this uh, airplane is that this is not a what we call almost ready to fly or an arc. Uh, most of these jets you see out here are arcs, they're almost ready to fly. They come pretty much like the chin. Jamie built this from a set of planes. So this is what we call a stretch built airplane. It's powered by a 120, I believe, uh, King Tech uh, turbine. Um, very, very scale, very, very beautiful color scheme on it. Nice camo color scheme. And when it gets it up in the air, you're going to see that full 98-inch delta wing. So he's got elevons on the back. In other words, the uh, control systems on the back serve as both elevators and ailerons. Of course, it has a standard rudder. Looks like he's gearing up, he's firing up, and here we go. The Avril Vulcan, folks, built from plans. That means Jamie bought all the wood and got all the, cut all the formers and cut all the spars and did all the things that you have to do to actually build something from scratch. And that's an amazing thing in these days, folks, because not a lot of guys are builders, but Jamie is a true builder and he's a true craftsman, and this is a beautiful airplane. So let's watch Jamie go through his paces here. This is called a trim pass, folks, so he's just at the, probably about two-thirds throttle there. He's just getting the airplane trimmed out. Want to have everything nice and uh, steady and smooth. Jamie's one of these guys who also doesn't typically fly with gyros, so he's doing all the heavy lifting up there, not using gyros or ASTX or all that other nifty technology. He also flies with old-school uh, translators, so he's got a JR. an old-school guy. He's been doing this a long, long time. Here we come in for a low pass. Uh, we should say lower, yeah, absolutely lower. He took exception to the fact that I called him old. Even though I think he's older than me. All right, we're coming in from the left again, and we're going to come across show center. He's going to do a nice slow pass, and he's going to power up, and I think he's going to do a uh, uh, wing over on the right side. So he's going to pull up, and he's going to get from there. You see that beautiful delta wing. And he's running over, and that's, ladies and gentlemen, it's total wing over. Big radius on top. <laughs> so he's going to do uh, he's going to do something with the model that you don't normally do with a full scale uh, Vulcan. He's going to do a slow roll, but this airplane, because of the thrust of the weight, is capable of doing a slow roll. And here we go. Beautiful. A combat pilot flying that. Mainly because this airplane was designed to drop bombs, so. And this is just the way uh, he's flying in terms of its actual uh, scale speed. Even though it's probably about 125 miles an hour, that's probably pretty scale for the airplane. Reasonable amount of thrust to weight, as you can see, he's got pretty good vertical performance there, performing a very beautiful split up. Just a little bit of damage, survived that crash landing, which uh, sometimes they don't do. 
So this has had uh, had a rough life, a little bit of a rough life in terms of that, but uh, uh, every other time I've seen it flying, it's performed perfectly. Standing next to him is the guy who's going to fly in our next uh, grouping is Ken Montblatt. Ken, shake your hand out here. Let everybody know who you are. And Ken and his really good friend Clark Graves are going to do a formation flying exercise with two beautiful airplanes, beautiful scale airplanes. Out there. I don't know if that's supposed to be like that, but I saw the right wheel peeking off. But that was not intended to be a dirty pass, so. So he's going to come across here, he's going to drop those gears so you can get a good look. So here we go, SC3. Always preferable. So, if everything's lined up right, and as uh, Jamie's been explaining to you all day, so, uh, he's got everything correct, then uh, he'll land. Otherwise, he'll go around. So, things look pretty good right now. We'll see how it goes. And there's that area where a camouflage airplane is not your friend against that green mountain. Hey, folks, what do you say? That was a beautiful landing. Soft. Nice job, Jamie. I'm going to turn the mic back over to Jamie because he knows more about the next two airplanes and the next two pilots than I ever thought about knowing. Because he hangs out with them every weekend. So, Ken, generally, if you see Jamie, or Ken or Clark, you're going to see the other two guys, and they are the three amigos for sure. And I'll tell you what, they are three of our best, best jet pilots. So Ken and Clark are going to be the initial uh, guys, and the smart for two beautiful steel airplanes. I don't believe we've seen the mid yet. Jamie! Um, that had to be top three, man. Oh, man. Really. Get so, that was a great landing. This is a great landing. And I'll turn it back up.